Hey everyone, welcome back to Keto Asian Flavors. It's Anne, who is craving the ultimate bowl of keto pho. Hit the like button if you do, and I'll teach you how to make it from scratch. So months ago, I've prepared you for this moment by creating and sharing a keto flat noodle recipe as well as a keto beef ball recipe. Now, let's put it all together and make this clear, aromatic, and flavorful broth. The key to a clear, deep flavored broth starts in the way the bones are prepared. In a large bowl, add in the bones and fill the bowl with water and a bit of vinegar and or salt. Leave it to soak for one hour. For the first time, I'm using a mix of beef bones and a bit of pork bones. Some people were wondering if pork bones can be used in the mix without compromising flavor and the end result. So today, I'm testing it out and will tell you guys what I think at the end of the video. While the bones are soaking, preheat the oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit to roast the bones. After one hour, drain and rinse the bones. You will see the excess myoglobin in the water. Myoglobin is a protein that keeps the meat red. Removing it from the meat along with the other unwanted blood in the bones is a first step to a clear, great tasting broth. When soaking oxtail, it helps to enhance the flavor of the meat and makes it juicy and tender. Transfer all the bones onto a baking sheet with a wire rack for roasting. I prefer roasting the bones over parboiling it because roasting draws the gelatin and the minerals out of the bones, which will result in a rich, deep flavored broth. Roasting time is two hours. About one hour into roasting, add 12 quarts of water to a large stock pot. Turn on the stove to high and bring the temperature to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, make the keto pho noodles if you haven't already. It needs a few hours to set in the fridge before cutting it, so make it ahead or manage your time wisely. For the full recipe on how to make these keto pho noodles, please check out this video in the description box below. When choosing bones for broth, choose mature bones for a deeper and sweeter flavor. Do you see this beautiful golden color here? This is after slow roasting it for two hours. At this time, turn off the oven and check the temperature of the water. Keep it at 200 degrees Fahrenheit when simmering the broth. Now it's time to add all the bones to the stock pot except for the oxtail. Transfer the oxtail to a bowl, let cool, and keep refrigerated until needed. Keep the pot simmering at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of 8 to 12 hours. Occasionally skim off the scum to keep the broth clear. Here's a couple of important tips. Do not bring the pot to a boil or cover the pot with a lid. Cooking the broth over high heat and covering the pot with a lid will result in a cloudy broth. Four hours before serving, prepare the ginger and onions. Wash both using cold water and slice the ginger. Broil in the oven for 30 minutes on a baking sheet with a wire rack. Meanwhile, wash, peel and chop the green daikon and set aside. White daikon or jicama can also be used. This is to naturally sweeten the broth. Skipping it can also be an option if you would like to use more sweetener instead. Toast the spices on the stove top. You can also buy the spices individually and add it to the broth as desired. This bag of spice comes with a disposable spice bag. I won't be needing it as I have my own spice ball and filter. Toast the spices for about 2 minutes over medium-low heat until fragrant. Keep an eye on it and do not burn the spices. When it's nicely charred, remove the onions and ginger from the oven and let cool. To the spice ball, add the cinnamon sticks and ginger slices. Bruise the ginger by smashing it. This will release more juice and flavor. Close the spice ball by using the latches. At this time, add just the ginger and the cinnamon sticks. Otherwise, wait until the one hour before serving to add it with the rest of the spices. I prefer some color to my clear broth, so I add the ginger and the cinnamon sticks three hours before serving. When the onions are cool enough to handle, carefully peel off the skin. Try to keep all the layers of the onions intact. Add in the onions and daikon and continue to simmer at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Add the remaining spices to the pot by using a filter. I'm using a stainless steel beer brewing filter here with a fine filtration of 300 mesh. The broth will evaporate and reduce while simmering. When it does, add some more hot water to replace the evaporated amount. Do not use cold water as this will result in temperature shock and will make the broth cloudy. Continue to filter the broth to keep it clear. Season the broth with some sea salt. Start with 1 to 2 tablespoons and adjust to taste. Adding fish sauce to the broth is an optional step. If adding, add it right before serving to avoid a sour tasting broth. Fish sauce can be offered as a condiment on the table instead. Remove some of the onions and daikon to make some room for the oxtail. Place the oxtail into the broth and continue to simmer for about 30 minutes. 
If you have a favorite keto hoisin sauce recipe, mix some to really enhance your eating experience. To make keto sriracha, just simply blend the chili garlic sauce with some water and allulose to taste. I do not use store-bought brands because it contains sugar. This chili sauce has the same ingredients minus the sugar as an ingredient. It's an easy way to ketofy sriracha and takes no time at all. Once the sauces are ready, pour it into a condiment bottle and keep refrigerated. To sweeten the broth, I'm using pure monk fruit liquid that I had just purchased. A few drops is fine as it's very concentrated. Another option is to use allulose to sweeten the broth. As you can see, allulose does not affect the appearance of the broth. I stopped using mushroom seasoning to naturally enhance the flavors because it makes the broth cloudy. I now depend on the flavors from the roasted bones, fish sauce, and homemade keto beef balls for flavor. Remove all the onions, daikon, spices, and bones. Transfer the broth to a smaller pot if needed and filter through a sieve. Add in the beef balls and white part of the green onions and continue to simmer. The beef balls will add more flavor to the broth. If you have made the beef balls ahead of time, add it to the broth as soon as you can. I had just finished making them so I had no option to add it earlier. The keto beef ball recipe was shared a while ago, so I'll link it down below. I like my faux broth to have an amber color with deep flavors like this. If you would like it lighter, just remember to add the spices one hour before serving. Adding it too soon or leaving it too long in the broth will make it dark. Right before serving, turn on the heat and bring it to a boil to cook the sliced beef. A good broth takes time and patience. This is one recipe I did not use my Instant Pot for because the broth will never be this clean and this clear. If you make your own beef balls and add it to the pot to simmer, it will add so much more flavor. You can make the beef balls ahead of time and freeze it until needed. And don't forget the keto pho noodles. When it's all set in the fridge, roll it up, cut it into strips, and soften it as per instructions in this video. Sometimes I would make pho with beef brisket or beef shank, but my kids prefer thinly sliced ribeye and thinly sliced boneless beef steak. My younger one calls it 3 second beef. To serve, wash all the herbs and vegetables. Slice one yellow onion and the green onion stalks. Roughly chop some cilantro and cut some limes into wedges. You can leave the Thai basil on its stems, the Thai chili whole, and the culantro unchopped. Place everything on a plate or a serving platter to allow family and guests to build their own perfect bowl of keto pho noodle soup. I like to put the basil and culantro last so that the hot broth doesn't overcook it. Beef noodle soup is the perfect comfort food. It warms the soul and it's simply delicious. Did you know, pho is believed to be influenced by a French beef stew called pot au feu? which means pot on the fire. It is believed that China also had an influence for the use of rice noodles and spices. Pour the hot broth directly onto the beef to let it cook. So here's my review on using pork bones to make foul broth. It doesn't make a big difference in the overall taste, but I do find that it creates more scum when simmering. And of course, using a mix of beef bones is still my preference for more beef flavor. If you would like, you can add more sliced onions at this point. I'm taking my time to taste all the flavors and textures. Especially now that I have an awesome keto rice noodle recipe to make it as authentic as keto can be. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope I've inspired you to make the ultimate bowl of keto fog at home. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Keto Asian Flavors for more authentic Asian recipes. If you enjoy my videos and would like to support me on Patreon, it's linked below. See you again next time.